Hello and welcome to Let's Talk Rugby World Cup Qualification. My name is Paul, I'm the guy behind Driving Mall and thank you very much for joining me. Please feel free to whack in any comments below, I'm always up for a good rugby chat, so do get in touch. So, next week we have the Rugby World Cup 2019 draw and we will find out how the uh, the seeded teams or the teams that qualified so far will fit into different pools who will have the pool of death uh, and who will have an easy pool or an easy ride through to the quarterfinals and arrive at undercooked and get knocked out then instead. All of that kind of stuff will come out next week. But last year I wrote a piece looking at how they do how teams qualify for the Rugby World Cup and what World Rugby had done for this tournament in 2019. So before we go and look at 2019, well, let's look at the last two World Cups, which is 2011 and 2015. How did they do that, do it that time? So they had the 12 teams that finished top three in each of their in each of the, the four pools, uh, went through and I said it made up 12 teams. And that included all of the five, uh, Six Nations and the Rugby Championship teams within there. So the 10 from that, plus another couple um, outside of that were uh, in making up that 12. They then had seven teams qualifying from uh, regional competitions um, straight into the Rugby World Cup. And that was split by one from Africa, two from the Americas, uh, one from Asia, two from Europe and one from Oceania. And that's how, um, so that gets us up to 19 teams um, and the final team uh, came from a repechage uh, tournament um, and the teams from that came from the best runners up um, from those regional qualification tournaments of Africa, Americas, Asia and Europe. So those four teams played out a repechage. As you can see, it's a fairly simple process. You had 12 teams qualifying from the previous Rugby World Cup. Uh, then you had seven teams coming from regional competitions straight into it and four teams that didn't quite make it into uh, via the regional competitions got to have a second chance um, through the repechage. So what's different this time? The big difference this time is uh, that to start off with Japan and Georgia went and upset the apple cart and got themselves automatic qualification. And that changed the balance of the teams that qualified previously. And we'd always had one from Africa, which is obviously South Africa, one from the Americas, um, Argentina, um, naught from Asia, six from Europe, and four from Oceania. So basically Australia, New Zealand, plus two out of Tonga, Samoa, um, and Fiji. The big difference was those two out of Tonga, Samoa, and Fiji didn't make it this time. And instead, we had um, Japan and Georgia automatically qualifying. Suddenly we had the prospect that we only have one of the Pacific Islands making it through to the 2019 Rugby World Cup, which would be unthinkable, essentially. So they had to change things, and I get that. And they really had three, three choices. One was to leave the qualification as it was, in which case we wouldn't have had two out of Fiji, Samoa and Tonga. i say that would be unthinkable. The other one was to change the balance of the qualification slots. So since Europe and Asia had got one extra one through automatic qualification, take away um, some of their slots and give them to Oceania. So three teams could qualify from there rather than just the one. And maybe one automatic and maybe one um, repechage spot, for example, would be one way of doing it. Um, or the other one was to take what is an easy, understandable qualification process and make it really complicated. What did World Rugby do? They went for option three. So this is going to take some doing, but basically they took something I say that was relatively, relatively simple and made it difficult. Africa um, stays the same. They get um, one qualification spot and one repertoire spot um, as uh, before. Um, and these will come out of the, uh, the Rugby Africa uh, Championship. So simple and even there. The Americas also get two qualification spots and one's place in the repechage as of before. Um, but here's where the bias starts to be seen. Um, the USA, and rather than having a regional qualification thing and the top teams go through, 
The USA will play off for one qualification spot. The loser then gets a shot at the second slot in the game against the top South African side, excluding Argentina, who already qualified. And the loser of that game gets a reference charge spot. So, as you can see, USA and Canada have three shots at qualifying. Once in a game against each other, once again against a team from South America, and if they lose that game, they then get another shot into in the repechage as well. Previously, it was um, they they had to play off against other teams first, uh, other teams as part of the regional competition, and go in. Um, so clearly, the USA and Canada have a very good shot at getting through, whereas teams like Uruguay and Chile, um, it's much harder for them, or, or there's less chance of them going through. Um, so that's really where um, where it happened. Previously, the regions qualified individually, and there was no overlap for um, for the ref charge, which is um, and that's also no longer the case. So here we go. Here's another complicated piece. In Oceania, Fiji, Samoa, and Tonga will play a round robin competition, and two of them will qualify for Japan. Fairly simple. That's good. The third gets another chance, and we'll come back to that in a second. Europe will have one team that qualifies from the Rugby European Championship. Um, the second team will get another chance to play the third place from Oceania for a qualification slot, and the loser gets the repechage. So again, these teams get a, an opportunity through their own competition, um, through a, a, a sort of a loser's chance, and then into the repechage as well. Um, that leaves us with one repechage spot left, um, which goes to the winner of the Asia Rugby Championship, um, which uh, Japan isn't taking part in uh, in, this, uh, in this case. Um, they get to play off against the winner of the Oceania Cup, which is from Oceania that doesn't include um, the main Pacific Islands, so you're looking at people like the Cook Islands, etc., playing in that competition, and the winner gets a repechage slot. So basically, from the Asian Championships, you've got a, a win, you've got to win, win the Asian Championships, you've then got to beat a team, the winning team from the Oceania Cup, and then you get into the um, repechage um, and a chance to qualify. So you really do have to um, jump through hoops, whereas other teams, if they just win one of those um, steps along the way, um, they get in. Um, and in my opinion, that really is unfair. Um, the World Rugby is showing a clear bias as to who they want to be at the Rugby World Cup. They want the USA and Canada there uh, for the television markets. They want the, all three Pacific Islands there because um, of the history of, of their involvement in rugby, which I understand, but there's other ways of getting them there. Um, and they're not really, they don't really want teams like Hong Kong or oh, well, South Korea making it uh, because they obviously don't think they're strong enough currently um, to, to, to get there. Uh, so, personally, I think that's been really it's, it's wrong for World Rugby to be making those decisions um, in that way. What they should really have done is just have rebalanced the, um, the qualifications, taking away a, maybe the, the main... The, um, one of the, the, the standard the automatic qualification from Asia, take away one of the two automatic qualifications from Europe um, and given those to Oceania, um, or even have taken the, um, the European reference charge place away and one of and the Asia automatic qualification would be another way of doing it. Um, but no, they decided to go through this convoluted way um, where most of us are not going to be able to keep track as to who's, um, who is qualifying and who's not, um, and we'll just have to get told at the end by World Rugby. So there's my opinion. Um, it's I say I wrote this all yet last year, so you can go to my website and have a read of the actual article if you prefer reading um, rather than to see all those details. Uh, it's all documented there for you to have a. Thank you very much for joining me. Um, I say do leave comments below. Uh, tomorrow I'm at 9 a.m. in New Zealand time. I'm going to be chatting with. Um, uh, I've gone blank as to who it is. <laughs> oh, I'm bad with names. Chatting um, about um, governance in rugby looking at the USA and comparing it to some places like New Zealand and the UK. Um, so please do join me um, for that for the rugby discussion live on YouTube Live. Uh, you can check out my tweets for the link on that. Look above um, and there is a link to my newsletter uh, or if you're on YouTube it's down below. Please do share this with your friends uh, and let people know how unfair World Rugby has been with, with qualifications for the Japan Rugby World Cup. And if you're on YouTube, give it the old thumbs up. Thank you very much. See you all next time.